Lexus LC500 was one of my favorite cars that I tested last year. And if you follow a lot of car channels on YouTube, it seems as though I wasn't the only one. As is often the case with many large and beautiful coupes, Lexus decided that it was time for the LC500 to take off its top. And while this LC500 convertible is $110,000, to be honest, that's probably less than you spent on OnlyFans last month for the same experience. What's going on everyone, Jax here, and today I have the 2021 Lexus LC500. So we're back with the LC500 in convertible form. And to be honest with you, not much has changed here other than the upper half of the car being removed. Same incredible concept car on the street styling. Same glorious 5 liter V8 making 471 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque. And same perfectly crafted interior that somehow matches the exterior's outrageous looks. So why get the convertible then? I mean, the coupe arguably looks a bit better, and it definitely feels as though it drives a bit better. Though neither version of the LC500 is a, is a pure sports car, it's more of a, a thoroughbred GT car. Well, I have a few thoughts on the matter in, in regards to why you might choose the convertible. And to be honest with you, it starts with the convertible top. One of the first things that struck me on my first drive in the Lexus LC500 convertible was how quiet and refined it sounded with the top up. The top looks great, it seems to be thick and well insulated, and strangely, the outside world feels about as far away in the convertible with the top up as it does in the Lexus LC500 coupe. But drop the top, which you can do up to 30 miles an hour and one of the most incredibly styled vehicles in decades suddenly becomes even more desirable and alluring. Is it more beautiful than the coupe? Well, no, not in like the artistic sense of the word. Uh, at least I don't think so. But there's a sense of drama to the LC500, a sense of occasion when you pull up in one. And removing the roof really only enhances that sort of feeling. And that gorgeous interior is now on display for anyone who happens to be passing by. In a weird way, like it or not, putting the top down invites people to share in the LC500 experience with you. And trust me, they will. There are drawbacks, of course, such as the LC500's not inconsequential weight of 4,500 pounds. To put that in perspective, that's about 1,600 pounds 
more than my C5 Corvette. It's also surprisingly a lot larger than my C5 Corvette. I put them both in the garage when we had a really terrible storm pass through. Yeah. It's a big car. That sort of mass prevents the convertible from ever feeling like truly sporty. It's got quick, accurate steering, and the 10-speed transmission does a good approximation of a sporty car, kind of like it does in the coupe, but it definitely has some bulk, and you'll feel it in the corners. And even though it's been about half a year since I drove the 2020 LC500 coupe, I could swear that the suspension is noticeably softer in the convertible, and that's fine. That makes perfect sense to me but it is more softly sprung than what I remember the coupe being. It's not so much a complaint as an observation, and it's sort of a concession to convertible duty, if that makes sense. And while it has the truly excellent Mark Levinson audio system and all of the tech and safety you would sort of require from a car, it doesn't have any technological wow features like some of its competitors. You could argue that there's no frivolous options, such as fragrance dispensers. That's not great, but it's not horrifying. Or gesture controls. That's better. <sighs> Thank you. But there's also no surround view camera in a luxury coupe that has a hood the size of a Buick Encore. Let me just put it this way. You're definitely paying for the looks, the craftsmanship, and that sonorous V8 engine. <laughs> All right, top down in the Lexus LC500. I'm not really sure how good that you guys can hear this. I'm just doing it because you gotta have a top down segment when you have a convertible, especially one that looks like this. Wind buffeting isn't too bad. I have the wind blocker in place, but I mean, if we're being honest, the main reason that I did this was so you could enjoy this. Winding out that V8 engine is just phenomenal. Do it from a lower speed. Oh yes. I said it last year when I had the LC500 coupe that this Toyota V8 engine or Lexus V8 engine is one of the most underrated engines on sale today. It is so incredibly awesome. It's got a great set of pipes. It makes a beautiful noise. This wonderful kind of halfway point between Corvette kind of growl and a sort of dual overhead cam, like kind of Italian rip. Like it, it, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just got such a perfect character, such an absolutely joyous sound that you can't help but smile when you're putting it through its paces. And that's really what this car is all about. It's all about enjoyment. Now there is a fair amount of wind noise. That's to be expected when you take the roof off of a car. The wind blocker helps. You can have a pretty normal conversation. We're going 55 miles an hour right now. And I can hear myself talk to you guys just fine. I'm not exactly a convertible connoisseur, so I'm not gonna pretend to be able to compare this against other convertibles of its ilk but it seems perfectly reasonable to me. And at lower speeds, more, you know, normal speeds, it's totally serene. You could just trundle around town and enjoy the open air. And, you know, I was thinking that I like the coupe more just because I feel like the design is a bit more cohesive, but there's something about the convertible nature that really suits this car. Yeah, it might not look as good as the coupe, you know, objectively, artistically speaking, but like it suits the, the character of the car or mission statement, as you know, I like to say. Now we're on the handling road and I have it dialed into Sport Plus mode, mainly because this car is pretty softly sprung. It, I'm not 100% sure if it is in fact softer than the coupe, but I, my seat of the pants, my butt tells me that it is. It it really feels cushier than the coupe, and I'm fine with that, 100% fine with that. You're not getting the convertible to go to the track. You're getting it to, let's be honest, show off, and uh, this car succeeds at that. And so you want a comfortable ride. You want a kind of cushy ride, and this car delivers. For a car riding on gigantic wheels, it's not bad at all. In fact, we're coming up to the big bump here on the handling road, and uh, yeah, that was it in Sport Plus.
Now, to be honest with you, in Sport Plus, I would expect this car to crash over it a little bit more. That speaks to the softer nature and the more relaxed driving priorities of this car. Dynamically, it's very similar to the coupe. Steering is quite good. The front end turns in really nicely, which is surprising because it's 97 feet long. Take it to see, Mr. Murdoch. 10-speed transmission makes the most of the power. My only real dynamic quibble is the brake pedal feel is not great. It's a little inconsistent. It's a little touchy. I don't remember the coupe being that way necessarily, but I did notice it here. It's, it's not quite as progressive as you'd like. And the ride harshness, the suspension is soft, but you cannot ignore the fact that this car has 21 inch wheels and very thin tires. So there is a little bit of harshness over rough pavement. But other than that, what is there to complain about? This car is an absolute joy. And I really cannot imagine taking it over another high-end convertible for, you know, $110,000. I mean, I'm a teacher. I can't imagine taking most cars of any kind for $110,000 because it would bankrupt me eight times over. But if I had $110,000, I would definitely want something like this. I am so irrationally excited that Lexus is putting this V8 into the IS. I just want it to continue on forever. I think the really cool thing about the LC is that in convertible form, it just makes you happy. It's such a striking car to look at and it drives well enough. And the V8 has that great bellow. It's like this perfect combination of just enough of all of the things that you would want out of a car like this, out of a showpiece car and the V8. <laughs> oh my gosh, I could do that all day. You can see it on the tack as it swings past about 3,500 RPM. The exhaust just opens up. I kind of wish there was like a bypass for it where you could just go full a-hole mode and just let it be open all the time because in Sport Plus, I want it to be open all the time. I get in like, you know, normal mode or sport mode having it kind of come and go, but in Sport Plus, just have it blat all the time. Could you imagine what this thing would sound like with a custom exhaust? Oh my gosh. That's what Lexus needs. They need like an F Sport line of custom pieces, kind of like TRD or you know, like TRD, like Gazoo Racing or whatever dumb crap it's called now. But Lexus needs like an F Sport line and you know, kind of play off the F. You know, they're, oh my gosh because this car is so fun, man. I used to think Lexus, back in the day, I was like, Lexus is just a Japanese Buick, who cares? But lately, I found myself really desiring some of their products and it makes me happy. I love when a brand kind of defies expectations, sort of like defies convention. And for me, Lexus is doing that. The naturally aspirated V8 and Lexus carries the torch. It's a beautiful thing. This is the perfect day for this kind of car too, man. It is 59 degrees. It is like 0% humidity here in Atlanta. It is absolutely glorious today. And this is a glorious car. I really hope that all this is coming through on the microphones and I'm not just wasting my breath. Is the Lexus LC500 the most underrated car on sale today? If it's not, it should be in the conversation because a car that looks this good and brings this much of a smile to your face, it deserves all the praise, man, all the praise. Every video I saw about a week ago was like, BMW M3 and M4 and they're really good, but they look weird and blah, blah, blah. But you know what's even better than that? How about a car that drives pretty good, maybe not quite as good as that, but it looks eight million times better. Yeah, sure, in 10 tenths on a track, you know, something like an M4 would be worth it, but stop telling everybody you're gonna take it to the track and like it matters, because guess what, you're not. You're not gonna take it to the track. You're a poser. Get this and embrace it, man, because this car just screams attention. Everybody look at me right this second. I am driving a bright yellow piece of art. And in case you didn't see me, you're gonna hear me. Let's do a quick cop check. All right. Open it. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. That 10 speed trying to do some little blips on the downshift. Oh, it's 
good enough, man. It's good enough. This car, I don't think a dual clutch would suit it at all. When you have the convertible top down, you can hear the mailboxes and stuff choo, 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 going by. That's just so fun. Oh, I don't want to give this one back, man. I don't want to give this one back. You feel that weight in the corners, man, going through this little S-curve near my house. You can feel the weight. It's 4,500 pounds, but, you know, I don't care because it's a convertible. It's not trying to impress anybody in the handling. It's just got to be good enough, and it is. It really is. So should you buy a Lexus LC500 convertible? Well, yes, if you're looking for a convertible version of one of the most unique and stunning automotive designs in recent memory. If that's the case, then this is basically in a class of one. It's an impeccably made piece of rolling sculpture that delights the senses and feels utterly, completely, and truly special. And it does feel special. Every second you're behind the wheel, it feels special. For me, I would probably still take the coupe. I find the overall design to be just a little cleaner, although, I do think the vert looks pretty good with the top up. It certainly kind of holds on to the essence of what makes the coupe special. There are truly no losers here when it comes to LC500 design, that's for sure. The LC500 is a reminder of what a brand like Lexus can do with its deep pockets and resources when it's truly just let off the leash to kind of go crazy and just create a car that's sort of pure joy, pure vibrance, pure design, pure art. As I said in the RCF review and the LC500 review last year, who would have imagined that Lexus of all brands would be the one that's championing the V8 engine, the naturally aspirated V8 engine in 2021, while nearly every other luxury automaker has gone to some sort of forced induction. And in case you haven't heard, they're stuffing this engine into the all new Lexus IS later this year. Thank you, Lexus. Thank you for realizing that making a car special isn't necessarily rooted in one particular feature or characteristic. It's the sum total of a cohesive vision. Bold design, thoughtful engineering, and one hell of a V8 engine. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I appreciate the views, and I'm gonna thank you a little faster because it's starting to drizzle and my insanely expensive convertible top is down. So if you like this video, hit like. If you wanna stick around, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Now I gotta go put the top up. Thanks for watching. Peace. Good lord, did a kid just die in soccer practice? Jeez. All right, soccer practice kids. Getting a little out of control there. Unless you're playing murder ball, you need to, you need to focus on practice, less on screaming. Jesus Christ, kid. Coach, tell him to shut up. That was an obnoxious amount of time. It is definitely sprinkling. You know, weatherman, I'm a teacher. That's a hard job. I can't think of another job where I could just be wrong every day and still get paid. I know, sorry if you're watching and you're a weatherman. I don't actually mean that. You know, it's a cliche joke, but come on, dude. 0% chance of rain. Now I'm getting drizzled on in my freaking $100,000 convertible while I'm filming a video. At least I don't live in Maine. <laughs> hey, Billy. I'm just going to keep talking and Dog Walker Man's going to be in the background. What's up, Dog Walker Man? Ooh, watch out for that dead thing, whatever it was. Stay away from that lawnmower. Spewing grass clippings. It's not really what I want to get in my car before I go film. Hey, you know, it's really cinematic. A car full of grass. That wasn't like a drug reference or something. There's too much pollen to leave it down.